morning kids welcome back in this video lecture we will discuss about the keywords which we will be using in static electric fields in the last video lecture we have seen the vector transformations between the coordinate systems and in this video lecture after discussing all these keywords i hope that you will be able to explain the terms of electric fields electric field intensity electric flux and electric flux density and etc and so on terms now i'll start with the basic electric fields as you are an electrical engineer somebody might ask you how do you define electric field basically so if somebody asks you to define an electric field regarding this electric field electric field is just like a space around a particular electric charge where the intensity or the effect of that charge is being felt let us suppose there is a charge here i am assuming a point charge here let us suppose this is a charge so let us suppose this is the area this is the area around which the intensity of that particular charge is being felt then this area is called as an electric field which has been created due to this particular charge and as i have already mentioned the charges may not be point charges all the time they might be of different configurations let us suppose there is a line charge or let us suppose there is a surface charge like this now the intensity of this charge will be felt in all the area around this one so this area where the impact of this charge is being felt it is called as an electric field so this electric field is basically measured in terms of electric field intensity normally electric field is created by either fixed charges or they might be moving charges also sometimes varying magnetic fields also time varying magnetic fields also they will develop electric fields that's what i have mentioned here the space around which electric charge in which its influence can be felt is known as electric fields and they are function of position and time and they are caused by varying magnetic fields or electric charges and the impact of electric field is generally termed as electric field intensity and it is measured in volt per meter see this is the electric field basically see assuming that this is a charge this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge point charges isolated charges now the area around which this arrow represented area it is the electric fields and these are basically termed as lines of force electric lines of force or what we call them as electric flux that we will discuss in the next slide now as already mentioned electric field is measured in terms of electric field intensity so let us suppose there is a charge here and this is a area let us suppose where the electric field is being felt so at any point in this area so if i keep a unit positive charge so what is the force which is experienced by this unit positive charge because of this original charge assuming that this is the assuming that this is the main charge now this is a new charge which has been placed a unit positive charge the impact or the force which this unit charge is experiencing because of this main charge it is called as electric field intensity and electric field intensity is basically represented by the symbol e and it is the vector quantity represented by the symbol e and it is normally given by f by q force per unit charge so this is the formula which is generally employed see here force is a vector and electric field is also a vector and the units of this is you can for force you can write as newtons per coulombs 
or you can use volts per meter also. Either of these can be used for units of electric field intensity. Now, how to determine the electric field intensity of a charge? As already mentioned, the electric field intensity, let us suppose there is an electric field. If this is a positive charge, the electric field is always directed away from the charge. If it is a positive charge. Let us suppose if it is a negative charge, then the electric field is always directed towards it. This has been mentioned in the picture of the first slide also. Okay. So the electric field intensity due to a positive charge is always directed away from the charge, whereas for a negative charge, it is directed towards the charge. And let us suppose if this is the charge Q. Now, I'll take a, a charge Q. And I want to measure the electric field intensity at this point A. A is the point, O is the point where the charge is placed and A is the point of consideration and I want to move. If it is a positive charge, then the electric field will be in this direction, right? So, I want to measure the E at this particular point, which is at a distance of R. So, the formula is Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. If you consider it as D, it is D square. If you, I am considering here as R, so it will be R square. And I have already mentioned, see, let us suppose if there is a charge here, Q. Now, at this point also, I will take, this is O, this is A. Let us suppose this is at a distance of R. Now, what is the field here? It is, this is Q, let us suppose. So, it is Q by 4 pi epsilon r square and this is the force due to a. Let us suppose if I consider this particular point B which is also at a distance of R then this is also at a point of R square. Then what is the difference between these two? It is the direction and this direction e is given by. So that must be some difference right because a and b are different. So, and that difference is represented by the unit vector which is represented here. So, I have not mentioned here, this is only the magnitude. So, in general, E bar, if I see, E is nothing but Q by 4 pi epsilon d square. If I consider it as a vector, then I must find the unit vector here, unit vector. U R represents a unit vector. So, this is the representation of it. And the intensity of electric field at any point, and it applies superposition theorem. Let us suppose there are three charges Q1, Q2, Q3. And I want to consider electric field at this point. So if this is E1, this is E2, and this is E3, so E is equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3. Electric field intensity satisfies superposition theorem. Now let's move on to the next term which we call it as an electric flux. Now let us suppose there is a charge Q. There is a charge Q which is located at some point O. Now this charge will be emanating the lines of force. As we have seen, uh, you might have seen simple experiments on magnetic fields in your uh, intermediates north pole and south pole. If you draw the iron fillings around it, then they will be aligned in this fashion, right? Isn't it? So, these are called as magnetic lines of force and you will be naming them as magnetic flux. So, similar to this magnetic flux, the charges also, electric charges also, they emanate lines of force and these lines of force are basically called as electric flux. These are often represented by the symbol psi and magnetic flux is represented by phi whereas this is represented by psi. So, electric flux is defined as the total number of electric lines of force emanating from a charged body. Now, if you can see it is denoted by the letter psi. Now, let us suppose if I consider a charge. Q 
the number of lines which come out of this one in all the directions. It is considered to be equal to the charge itself. So, if I write here, the number of lines of force originating from a positive body is numerically equal to the charge of the body measured in coulombs, which means the total lines of force is basically called as psi flux, which is equal to the charge itself. So that's why the units of electric flux is considered to be the units of charge and that is equal to coulombs. This is the formula which we will use. Try to remember this formula. And next we will move on to the next term electric flux density. Electric flux density as already said since Q is a charge and it will be emanating lines of force around it. Now the lines of force if I consider a particular area. Now, if I consider this particular area, now the number of lines of force, see let us suppose if it is 4 by the area which I am considering, if it is let us suppose 0.1 meter square is the area. So, this is called as electric flux density. So, it is defined as the amount of flux or the lines of force which passes through your unit surface area. So, ensure that this surface area is at right angles to it. Uh, to the lines of force. Okay, so the amount of flux which is passing through the unit surface area, which is at right angles to the points or to the electric fields, it is often referred to as d. I can write it as d is equal to d psi by ds. And do remember, this is a vector, and its units are coulombs per meter square. Okay, now. Let us suppose if Q is a charge of the body where electric lines of force are originating. Let us suppose Q is a charge of the body where electric in this way the fields are coming out. Okay, this is a positive charge and assuming that these are different uh, lines of force which are emanating out. Let D be the distance of a point. Now let us suppose I am considering just like a sphere. Okay, I am considering it a sphere. Let us suppose P is the point on the sphere which is at a distance of R. The distance, I am assuming that Q is at the center of the sphere and R is the radius of the sphere. So, how much electric flux will pass through this sphere? So, whatever the surface area is there, automatically that amount of flux will be passing through it, right? So, for this one, let us suppose if psi is the total lines of force which is passing through this sphere. What is the surface area of this sphere? It will be given by 4 pi r square. If I consider it as d, then it will be psi by 4 pi d square. You know electric flux is always equal to charge, right? So, I will take it as q by 4 pi d square. This is the electric flux density. So, electric flux density is given by the lines of force per surface area of the passing of electric flux. And the units are coulombs per meter square. Now, if you see what is the relation between E and D, we have already obtained the relation between E. Electric field at any point is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q by D square, right? This epsilon naught is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon bar. Try to remember this one. Whereas D, it is given by Q pi 4 pi D square. So, what is the difference between this equation and this equation? There is only one difference which is nothing but this particular value, right? So, I can write it as E is equal to D by epsilon or I can write it as D is equal to epsilon E. Both are vectors. So, this is the relation between electric flux density and electric field intensity. So, that's it from my side. I hope you are able to explain the terms electric fields, electric flux, electric field intensity, electric flux density, etc. So, these are the lecture level questions. I hope that you will be able to define them and explain these keywords. Thank you. Thank you.